If you thought your tap water was clean and healthy, you need to watch this video as you're in for a shock. Hi, welcome to my channel, 10 Years Younger. So we're told every day how we should be drinking loads of water because it makes us healthy, it cleans away toxins and it's great for us. But what if the water you were drinking every day from the tap contained all kinds of harmful chemicals? How can that be good? So on this channel, I talk a lot about skincare and what supplements you can take, but no one really talks that much about water and we consume more water every day than anything else. So doesn't it make sense that that water is the best purity because I'm going to explain how you can get clean pure water in a cost-effective way. If you take tap water in the London area for example technically speaking it's perfectly safe to drink and it meets all the EU water quality standards however I'm going to list five things which could be potentially damaging to our health and are present in our tap water. More than 50 global studies suggest that people on average are consuming five grams of plastic every week. That's like this plastic credit card every single week. And that's coming from the air that we breathe, the food we're eating, but mostly from the tap water we're drinking. And the scary thing is that we don't know what the effect of this plastic on our body is yet. And if you're thinking, oh, I think I'm gonna to switch to bottled mineral water, it has the same plastic content. You can't escape it that way. Secondly, in some areas you've got old water pipes which are made of lead and that lead can seep into the water and obviously lead is highly toxic. Thirdly, depending where you live, chlorine could be added to your drinking water to act as an anti-contaminant. So while that used to be added alone, recently it's been added with ammonia because when those two things combine, they form chloramine and that has the same properties as chlorine, but it stays present in the water and it doesn't break down. But chloramine has been linked to several types of cancer, heart disease and asthma. And you've also got fluoride, which certain local governments add to drinking water so people will have strong, healthy teeth. However, fluoride has been linked to certain conditions affecting the brain, the thyroid and behavioural issues. Number four is pharmaceuticals. Our drinking water contains small quantities of antibiotics, antidepressants and also estrogen from the contraceptive pill hormone replacement therapy, but also from animal waste, which is used as fertilizer. These chemicals are excreted, enter the sewage system, but our water filtration cannot break them down, especially synthetic estrogen, which is harmful to wildlife. It turns male fish and frogs into females on contact. One study by the Medical Research Council found that men born since 1970 are 25% less fertile than men born 20 years earlier. So if this can continues then you can completely see how we could end up with a situation like the handmaid's tale where humans are no longer fertile so the NHS commented on this study and they said the findings of this study are a concern for ecologists but it's not yet clear what the implications on human health are so basically the NHS is saying we don't know we have no control over this and we have no idea what's going to happen and finally you've got pesticides and nitrates so with excessive rainfall they go through the ground and they enter the rivers, which is where we're taking our drinking water from. So there's one called atrazine, which is banned in the EU, but they still use it in the US and in Canada, which is highly toxic. So depending on where you are in the world, you can do your own research. And the final thing I wanna quickly mention is that if you've got poorly designed plumbing in your kitchen, then it could mean that the water is sitting there um, getting warmer and you can have algae or bacteria growing on it even though that's before you even turn the tap on. So you may have tried one of these water filters where you just open the jug, you pour the water in and you have a filter in here where the water runs through. These are quite expensive in the long run because you keep having to um, replace the filter and they're also not at all effective in getting rid of these five things we're talking about here. What you really need is a water distiller and the easiest way to explain distillation is to look at nature. So you've got the sea and when the sun hits the sea, the water evaporates but the salt in the sea stays there. It's just pure water that evaporates and it forms vapor, it forms clouds. And then when the clouds cool down, they turn into liquid and you get rain. So that rain is completely pure. So in an ideal world, we could drink the rain, but unfortunately, because you've got pollutants in the air, it's not pure. If you're enjoying this video, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell. 
So this is a water distiller that I bought on Amazon. I paid 169 pounds and it's made by a company called H2O Labs. So I chose this one firstly because it doesn't have any plastic parts. The water doesn't come into contact with plastic. This here is stainless steel and the filter inside here is made of porcelain. So plastic would be a potential contaminant to your pure water. The other thing I liked is that it's sturdy and strong and it switches itself off when it's done. So you can leave this overnight when you go to bed. And I like that it came with five uh, free filters so you don't have to worry about replacing them straight away. And these are the filters in here. So how it works is that you pour four liters of water into this, which is like a kettle, and this boils the water, turning it into steam. The steam is then condensed and cooled in here. There's a high powered fan which returns it back into a liquid state and then it drops drop by drop through here into your container. So anything that cannot turn into steam like minerals, microorganisms, pesticides, plastic and lead is left behind in the bottom. And this is what you see at the bottom of this um, kettle when you've finished. Everything that's left behind. So these droplets pass through an activated carbon post filter which is just here and this is replaceable. So this is because there are some contaminants like VOCs which stands for volatile organic compounds such as formaldehyde that can exist in a vapour or gas state and they may have escaped uh, into the condenser alongside with the steam. So when it passes through this carbon it eliminates any contaminants. The thing about um, this distiller process is that it takes five hours to get four litres of water. It's really, really slow. So if you have a large family, then this is going to have to be running constantly. This is the biggest one that I found. Um, so you can't really get bigger than four litres. So, and the other negative may be that it's going to push up your electricity bill slightly, although it would only be like, have, like running a kettle. So in most places in the UK, we have hard water, and that means you've got magnesium and calcium in the water. So when you heat the water, you get lime scale, which is like a chalky deposit. So that changes the taste drastically. And since I have been drinking this, I have to say it tastes much better than my tap water. So I used to add a fruit cordial to any tap water that I drank because I couldn't really drink it on its own. I didn't like the taste. Since I've got this two months ago, I've never added any fruit at all. I've just drunk this and it tastes much better. So finally, I just want to compare the water from a tap and from a water distiller. So the water on my left here is from a distiller and that's from a tap. So hopefully this is clear enough to see that the water which has been distilled is much, much purer. You don't have those kind of little deposits in there. So as a conclusion, I'd say there isn't really any alternative to getting a water distiller if you want pure water because those water filter jugs are not going to give you the same purity. So I can see visually when I compare a glass of water from the tap and from the distiller how pure it is. So that's enough for me. But I can also feel in my body that I feel much healthier. So for example, I'm sorry if this is an overshare, but when I pee, it smells different and it looks cleaner and also my skin looks more healthy and it has more of a glow than it did a few months ago so the biggest thing I suppose is really I'm able to drink more water because the taste is much better from distilled water so that's you know another health benefit so if you have a water distiller to recommend or if you're looking into buying one please comment below thanks very much for watching don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell and I'll see you soon